fucking dreads all on my fucking face, man. But uh, anyway, on to the review I've been waiting for. Fredo Santana, Walking Legend, his sophomore album. His first album was um, Trappin' Ain't Dead. Yeah, it was Trappin' Ain't Dead. Um, he the owner of Savage Squad Records. But I keep hearing it's him, Gino Marley, and uh, I want to say SD, but I don't know. But I keep hearing that it's those three, but I think it's his shit and they signed over there. Trap Ain't Dead was his debut album. You know, he part of OTFGB 300 Movement. If you don't know, you know what I mean, who he is. But to me, he reminds me a lot of Gucci Man from his flow, his voice, tone, and lyrics. Certain beats on here, um, especially number two. Um, but to me, he grew as an artist. Uh, I think he a different writer. He got a little bit deeper, more introspective, a tad bit more personal, but still kept it street, you know what I mean, for everybody that fuck with him on that street shit. Um, yeah, Childish Gambino with that, 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 the red shit we seen makes sense if you listen to this. So I don't, I think this song actually was out before that, so it coincided with each other, but definitely a good look. I can see him being like big as Gucci Man is to ATL with him and Chirac. That's just my personal opinion if you listen to the project. Um, I think the independent scene is definitely good for him. I don't think he should try to sign a label. I think he's doing what works for him. And I definitely have to say, like, yeah, there's nobody else out that camp that can't sit there and grow. Like, this is Chief Keef's cousin we talking about, you know what I'm saying? They blood cousins. So if you see your cousin growing as an artist like that, and you signed and he independent and doing way more shit, so, so you got to get your shit right, fam. Like, I'm just saying. Of course, the auto-tune, those niggas love auto-tune, so we, we can't take away from that. Um, What else? The features, you know, he didn't have a lot of them. You got Gino Marley on there, Lil Durk on there, um, Lil Reese on there, Chief Keef, of course, um, and that's basically it. You you know, production, Lil Ch Young Chopper's on here like three times. Um, basically, yeah, man, let's get into it. Number one, Check came in. Beat was hard as fuck, you know what I mean? The hook, his flow was crazy. He just basically flossing, you know what I mean? Check came in. Finally popping, finally doing what I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? So that is what it is. There's nothing to break down. Basic shit. Um, it don't make no sense. I thought that song was okay. The beat was cool. I like the hook. To me, his flow, he sound like Gucci Man. Maybe it's me, but he does sound like Gucci Man. And the lyrics are street as shit. Um, coming up, that's just a real record, you know what I'm saying? If you listen to the hook, coming up had rats and roaches, or mice and roaches. Both of them are just despicable, you ask me. But yeah, man, B was dark as shit. The hook was real. His flow was good. I like his lyrics. He was on point. He kept it real. And that's the side of him I ain't really never seen. Like So whoever he worked with on this project, you definitely can tell that they had an influence on him. All I ever wanted featuring Lil Dirk. Let's get it out the way. Dirk had a forgettable verse. Sorry. That shit was forgettable as fuck, and I'm not hating. Um, and I still don't see the hype behind Dirk. I, I will never understand that. His old shit better than his new shit. Um, but yeah, it was a good song. You know, I fuck with that record. Number five, Who Are You? The beat was zany as shit. You know what I mean? Uh, the hook was dope. To me, he sound like Chief Keef on there. He sound like Sosa. The lyrics are street. You know, he did his thing. But it's just like, who are you? Like, who the fuck are you? Like, niggas be doing this, but who the fuck are you? Like, you did? Who are you? So you get that. Half of it produced by Young Chop. Um... You don't know the half of it, man. Like, you don't know what the fuck I've been through. You know, you believe what you see on the blogs and comments and these niggas doing, you know, talking shit, doing the back and forth shit. And that's something he talk about a lot. That sneak this and he ain't fucking with it. You sneak his, you gonna get that if you sneak this him. You dig what I'm saying? But you don't know the half of it. You don't know his story. You don't know what he been through from having nothing to coming up and being his own boss. So I definitely fuck with that record. My wrist featuring Gino Marley, it got the uh, Drake excerpt from No New Friends, No New Friends. That shit was dope. I wonder if he had to actually had to cut a check for that. Even though it's just an excerpt, but shit, like... Who signed... Uh, you, I don't know, I think Drake probably signed off on it. Because I don't think you could use shit like that without being... And getting it signed off. So Drake, you know, he fucked with them shy rack niggas. He probably signed off on it, no problem. Um, Would have been dope if he got a, got a verse from him too, though. Uh... B was trapped. Gino definitely did his thing. To me, he underrated. You know, he he even grew. Because it's like his first mixtape, I was like, it's cool. But 
you know, he, he got with it, you know what I mean? He did his thing, so that song was straight. You know, the hook and everything was dope. Um, but if you listen to the metaphor in it, you know what I mean, my wrist, like, listen to it. Uh, Stay the Same featuring Lil Reese. Yeah, that was a good record, man. Like a drama type beat, dramatic type beat, you know what I mean? Some real lyrics in there. I like the hook. Reese had a good verse. That's the type of Reese that I feel like he should be uh, spitting towards his new shit. Definitely a good song. Sleeping in a Mansion uh, featuring Chief Keef. I heard it before. I wasn't fucking with it. I don't like it. Uh, Double Up featuring Gino Marley. Um, it's a cool song. That's a, you know what I mean. If you listen to it, you understand. It's a cool song, but it just ain't it ain't my type, my speed. Fuck the other side. Uh, we understand what that means. Um, that's link. So everybody that's not from there, like we all can sit there and say like we live from this coast or over here in this state. Fuck that side. We don't get along with that. But that's on some other type shit. I'm not gonna break that shit down no more. It's literally in Chirac. One side of people and one side they don't fucking like each other. So when he do records like this, they know what it is. We can only speculate like, oh, who are we talking about? Listen to this shit. It's a lot of shit that he gets off his chest and says. So. I think the beat was good. His lyrics, he got it off his chest. Like, fuck the other side. I don't give a fuck about y'all. Riot featuring Childish Gambino. Now, when I got this, I will say this. This album and his last one, he did get some good features on there. Like, not just some regular people, some notable people. You know what I'm saying? So, Young Child produced another banger. Childish Gambino, slide in your top five. Let him hate on that line. That's it. There's nothing more to talk about. His verse, flawless. He like... Isn't that what can you say? Fredo just let the nigga rock. You feel me? So I think this song was out. Don't get me wrong. Let me just think. Was out before he did the little rent shit. Because it's just crazy that I hear that shit and I'm like, yo. I fuck with that. My nigga child is. He need to drop another album instantly. You feel me? It's like that verse is just crazy. So if y'all say he can't spit, listen to that shit. Because at one point I'm listening to it like, is he getting lazy or he fucking around? But he brought it right back. It's like, yo. That nigga's a dope nigga, man. They did their thing together. They need to collaborate more. They should actually do a little EP. Like, I, I will fuck with that. That's something I'll buy. I'll go on iTunes. I don't even fuck with iTunes because I like physical copies. I'll buy that shit. Because I think them two got good chemistry. Uh, That's a no-no featuring Lil Reese. Chung Chop yet again. Banger. Fuck with the lyrics, the hook, the flow. You know what I mean? We all understand what's a no-no. Like, I'm not going to be with no thought bitch. That's a no-no. I'm not going to have a blunt and have some bullshit weed in it. That's a no-no. I ain't sharing my fucking lean. That's a no-no. But anyway, it was just dope, man. And the last track, um, I actually forget the, um, I thought the last track was dope. You know what I'm saying? Good beat, good hook, flow, straight, lyrics, crazy. You know, he definitely did his thing, man. Seven and a half out of ten, ten out of fourteen records, production, eight and a half out of ten, man. Fredo Santana did his thing. You know, out of everybody from Shirek just dropping shit. I still say King Louie got the best mixtape out right now. Lil Baby shit never fucking dropped, which I'm mad about that. But Fredo definitely got the uh, second best project so far. You know, still waiting on Bibby, Reese, Dirk shit, whatever, Chief Keef. You know, uh, Gina Marley supposed to drop a tape. SD with Truly Blessed. Um, yeah, man, just seeing what they gonna do. But they still, year by year, you know, since 2012, they still... Popular and shit, but I'm just wondering when it's gonna start to fade out. Cause Chief Keep so far, let's keep it real, he's the only successful one as far as mainstream. And Young Chop say that um uh, who he say? Lil Reese got more uh basically more mass appeal than Chief Keef. Alright, you know, he can if he wanted to, but I think it's S D. I think S D he like SD should have went before everybody because I think he has it more than more star power. That's what Chop said. Then Chief Keith, I don't believe it. I think SD, if he can get his shit right and get it, you know, understand the business aspect of it. That why does it take so long to put out projects if the production is done? They gave you the beats, you pay for them. The business aspect of it is done. All you gotta do is rap, get your shit out. What is the problem? That's the only thing I don't understand. How do you push back a mixtape? When it's just you upload it, you know what I'm saying? Like, hand it to the DJ if you got a DJ, upload it. Or whoever, you know, on your independent squad that handles shit like that, you give it to them, put it up, boom. Because from what I hear, you can be a regular rapper nigga at home and upload your mixtape to that piff and shit. So, that's the only thing I can say I don't like about these niggas where y'all take so long to finish it. Is it the production or you don't got nothing to do creative-wise or you waiting for a feature? Other than that, man, y'all shouldn't take, like, forever. Because this walking legend shit... This is supposed to be now, if I'm correct. I don't even think this was mentioned in 2014. 
You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. Y'all let me know, though. Come on.